If you're an average player, you want to be left alone, all right, because you want to be able to slide by. If you're a good player, you want to be coached. If you're a great player, you want the coach to tell you the truth every day. Did I hustle on that play? Did I make the right read? Did I play the guy with the right leverage? You want to know every play, because you know why? They want to be perfect. Everybody here makes a choice to do one of those three things. Welcome to the GOAT Consulting Podcast, a podcast dedicated to people striving to be a GOAT, the greatest of all time, serving it up in a way that you can get it in all stages of life. Hey, I'm Colby Jubinville, and welcome to another episode of the GOAT Consulting Podcast right here in VCE Productions. It's a new table and a new, a new location right in Nashville, Tennessee, but the people here are the same. To the right, the punt, pass, and kick champion. Uh, he does eat six sandwiches when he goes to McDonald's. We'll talk about that later. Oh, wow. Uh, the founder and CEO of the GOAT family of brands, uh, Tyler Burnett. Tyler, we're glad you're here today. It's going to be in the new studio here. New studio. Exciting times. And and to the left, the, the LinkedIn whisperer, uh, all the way from Brentwood. He made his drive a little bit shorter today. Um, he's the calming force to our show. Uh, we're glad you're here. Always on, on my left side, bringing it, bringing it every day, John. Byers. John, Thank thanks for, for being here today. Glad you remember my last name. God, he scared me there for a second. Well, it's, what, it's just it composure. Have been the first time. It's just pausing. It's getting getting acclimated to the new studio. That's part of what goats do. Yes. They get acclimated to the new studio. Mark that down. We gotta do an episode. We will. The 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 syrup's not with us today, but it is it it's is in spirit. spirit. Yes. It is. Everyone's welcome under the yellow under the yellow sign. Uh it's a simple idea. We serve it up in a way that you can get it. Yes. Our show was built on this idea of our 20s, you get in the game, and our 30s, you move up in the game. In our 40s, you stay in the game because those 30-year-olds are so damn good. In our 50s, what the research says, we finally say, what is it that I really want? And this this show was built around this idea of the GOAT, mm -hmm. your vision for the future. In, in sports, it's easy to see. The GOAT is someone that is recognized for their contribution, their greatness, and they elevate other people around them through the, their performance. In business, it's people that compete on unique perspective, education, and experience. What they do gives them energy, and it gives other people energy while creating new levels of challenge and opportunity. That's what the show's about today. That's what the show's always about. And today, our, we have a special show for you. We do. It's straight out of cable television. I'm excited about this show. And, and it's, it's called, a good topic. It's called Love It or List It. I've heard of that. Have you watched the show? I have. Are, are, which side do you... Do you Skew towards is, is really, it Hillary really or it. David? No, this Ooh. is a episode by episode basis, and I know you don't like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't. But uh, I'm not picking a side here today. I, I'm. I think I'm Team Hillary. Okay, well, I'm going to need to learn more about that. Are we we going to still share some goats before we always? We dive let's in? let's start off sharing some goats. Uh, the theme today, the show for today, is around love it or list it. We'll we'll talk about that and and why that. Um, is so important, especially in 2021 and in, in the world mm -hmm. that we live in today. But, John, I'm going to let you start off with your, with your goat. Why don't you tell us who it is? So I, I, I'm not sure that this entirely fit. This is a very loose goat mm -hmm. for love it or list it. But I'm going to go with Saturday Night Live pre-2002. Mm -hmm. And the tie-in to this particular topic is that the fact they should have sold Saturday Night Live. Like, they should have listed it. At the end of 2002, pre-2002, you had Will Ferrell. Who else? You had Belushi. You had Sandler when he was good. I mean, you had some really fantastic folks. Bill Murray, the best. Bill Murray was fantastic, too. Yeah. Uh, but you had Before more. my time, so I'm not commenting. <laughs> Well, you had you were what two at the time, I think. So you had you had Will Ferrell, more cowbell, right? Get off the shed, two of the better that they ever had. Chris Farley, yeah. where he pops out of the cake with uh, Patrick Swayze and the that. Chippendale dancer. So pre two thousand two SNL, you should have sold it, Lorne. After that, sorry, <laughs> not sorry. So that's your goat. That's my goat. Is the SNL? And in each stage of life, probably SNL means something different to you. Yes. I'm going to stay in the, the real estate and renovation market in Nashville. That Tyler, makes sense. Tyler, as you know, is hot. And I'm going to stay with the hottest real estate company right in Mur Murfreesboro in Middle Tennessee, mm -hmm. which is Old South. And my goat is uh, is Trey Lewis, the VP of sales and marketing for Old South, and John Floyd. They just built a 1,000 homes right in Middle Tennessee last year. Oh, wow. And they just committed a million dollars to uh, to charity. Uh, two things wow. that goats do, right? Give people energy and get energy from the work that they do. 
So that's my goats for today. Good goats. I mean, the, just what he's done over the last, how long has he been doing this now? 30 years? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and just building the machine. Building the machine. And creating opportunity. For him and everyone else. And I see that a lot in, in what I'm trying to do with the with the goat empire, as mm -hmm. you guys like to call it. Yes. And uh, definitely somebody that I look to look up to as well and wanting to create that opportunity for more people. And he's definitely done that. And then giving back as well. So yeah. I think I'm going to have to go and talk about the old man again. We are going to go there. We have to, okay? And and when Half I think when I think <laughs> <laughs> when I think about love it or list it, I think about I think about people, okay? And I think about developing talent or cutting ties and letting them go to build talent elsewhere. Uh, yes, <laughs> to let them <laughs> to let yeah. them build talent, but when I think about love it or list it, I think about do you continue to pour in love to your people and develop them? Love it. Or do you decide to list it and let them go a different direction? Mm. What a great spin on that. that um, I like that. Because here's what we do know. We do know at some point in our career, we're going to let ourselves down. Right? You've had that happen for yourself, sure. right? And we know at some point with the people that we lead that they're not going to live up to the performance Absolutely. that we want them to perform at. Right? And so there's two choices or two strategies that you have in that moment, John, to decide are you going to love – on your people, and that's the hard choice, yep. right? Or are you going to list them? Well, it's like the CFO, the, the old adage where the CFO says to the CEO, what are we going to dump all these all this money into into our people and then they're going to go away? Like they'll leave and go somewhere else. And yeah. the CEO says, well, what if we don't dump into all that money and, and develop them and they stay? Yeah. Right? It's and that's what it reminded me when you said that. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I just had two guys leave in the last month. And it makes you really sit sit back and think, did I dump enough into them or did they decide to list me because I didn't? So there's several, several different perspectives to look at it. Sure. From well, and, and it reminds me, it. it reminds me when I, when I started that football team in 1998 at Bellhaven in Mississippi and Norman Joseph in his first meeting, he said this to me, he said, we will never blame the player for the loss. We'll never blame the player for the loss. We will find out why. Raniger never. No, he, never, he, didn't, no, listen, Ran, he didn't subscribe no, to that message. No, no, no. Ran, Ran, Raniger. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, he, it was all about <laughs> it was all about the performance of the player. But it is a different approach, right? It is how do you look at investing in your people? The easy thing to do, the the, the thing that creates fear and anxiety and panic, is to list them, and that's one strategy that you have. If they're not performing at the level that you want, then you can send them on their way. The hard part the part that creates trust, the, car, the part that creates family, is that you you confront it and you look under and you find out why. You find so out what's going on. Let me share why this episode really connects with me. And you talked about this 2020 year being one of renovations. And the premise of the whole episode, at least in some ways, is renovation or selling. So a year ago, we were very much looking to move. We had six of us all upstairs in a four bedroom. We have a great house. We like it. We use all of it. But there, well, that wasn't true a year ago. We weren't maximizing the space in our house. And so we had somebody, we, Vanessa, diligently, like when she gets hooked on, we need something, another bedroom, bathroom. Like she is hyper-focused. We were looking to move. And that would have just made all kinds of challenges, as everybody knows, with moving. Before we do that... Let's have somebody come in and just help us think through if we stayed, can we reconfigure, do some renovations. And so we did. Jose Castro, who has become a, a great friend over the last year, he's done several projects. We talked about Max, you know, blowing, essentially blowing up the bathroom and having to spend 30 grand in that mess. But you're still hurt by that. I'm still hurt. He cut me deep with that one. You stimulated um, the economy, though. We covered that. We did. We talked about that. So <laughs> Jose comes in. He says, I think I can change up the basement a little bit. I can throw up a wall here or there, which so makes my head explode. Like, he's he's super talented. All American Care, that's the name of his company. Ding. <laughs> Sponsor in this episode. <laughs> we had him put up some walls. And here, here was the defining moment for me. Mm -hmm. So he spent about three weeks at the house, did all this work. We moved John David from upstairs to the basement, which was really great for everybody, him included, us, everybody. The world benefited from that. We fell in love <laughs> with the house all over again. Yeah. We were frustrated with it, but with a couple of tweaks, we took some inventory, we made a couple of tweaks, 
we fell in love with it all over again. And it made me think, right? Like how many times do we do that in our work relation and relationships in general, Mm -hmm. our marriage, those that we work with, our kids, that we take self inventory and realize I got to make some tweaks there so that we can fall in love all over again at whatever level of love that is, right? From a working relationship to, to not in a weird way to your spouse or whatever it is, right? Vanessa often tells, reminds me that we are on our second marriage. It just so happens to be with each other, right? Because we've had to make lots of tweaks over the years, yeah. like any marriage that's, that stays together does, right? So yes. you decided to develop it instead yes. of listing it. That's what this love that's it right. or list it means to me. That's kind of where I, where I resonate here. Yeah, love it, or, love it or list it. One of the things that we know for sure in in both is that love it or list it, the, the work's going to be hard, right? Sure. There's there's work in the renovation. Nobody likes renovations while it's happening. Yeah. It's messy. It's dusty. There's people all up in your business. And yeah, you want to see a finished product. You don't yeah. want to have to wait and go through all that. And, and then the the listing part, you're worried about selling the house. You're worried about moving. So so there's there's challenge within both yeah so what ultimately do you think makes people draw a line in the sand and say i'm going to go one way or the other what what do you think it is Mm. in Mm. relationships in business i think a lot of it probably depends on your past right for instance me me growing up and and playing locally baseball for coach pete at mtsu oh gosh and uh (laughs) We may or may not throw some Coach Pete language in there, but please bring it. <laughs> but you know, so many times, like we'd be conditioning, for instance, and you know how a coach will tell you, "Well, we're going to run twelve sprints to foul pole to foul pole." Twelve, the lat you run that last the twelfth pole and you think you're done for the day. You take a sigh of relief, and then Coach Pete goes, "All right, extra innings." <laughs> <laughs> and so, Welcome part of that. Pete. Part of that, growing up with that and learning mm-hmm. how to battle through that, yeah. you understand that you pushing a little bit more, and then that weekend you're in a 15 in, fifteen inning game with Vanderbilt, mm. five hours and thirty five minutes in the game, and wow. your team comes through to win because you battled through the adversity. You didn't look at the other side and say, "Dang it, we got to run more." You 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 took advantage of the opportunity to get better and push through it. Yeah, here's here's what I think, and and I'm gonna. St- I hate speaking for more people than just me, but I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to do just a little bit. I think most of us are hardwired. I am to start like when things get really difficult, want to bail and just go get a fresh start. And I think maybe sometimes that's the easier path. Maybe most of the time that's the easier path. And we could argue why it may not be also, right? But I do think we're hardwired to just kind of say, scratch it, let's start over, whether it's a podcast or a new place or whatever, a new position at work, with work, whatever it is, sometimes that's the right answer. But I think most of the time, in fact, I'm going to share one of my favorite analogies, and I thought about this, is um, I love this quote called, better healed than never broken. And it's all around this concept that the Japanese created called Kintsugi. Kintsugi. Maybe I got a new nickname in the future from that. But (laughs) Kintsugi, it is a Japanese art of repairing broken pottery and infusing it back together with gold. In fact, Kintsugi means gold repair. And if you look it up, hopefully you're doing that now. Pause the podcast. Check it out if you're not on a run or something. Look it up. It's beautiful. But the pottery actually breaks. They forge it back together with gold, and it's more beautiful than it ever was in the beginning. Hence the quote, better healed than never broken. The scars, the cracks become then, then become the focus of the whole pottery, and it turns something that was ordinary into unique and exquisite. And I think sometimes, like we were in a small, in a small way, about to move, we would have missed the beauty and the uniqueness and the greatness that this house that we currently live in today, that we lived in a year ago, we couldn't see it then. And we almost had to blow it up to be able to to enjoy it in a way that we never have before. And again, I think all of this ties back to relationships at whatever level it is also. But that's one of the things that helps me connect with this topic. Kintsugi. Kintsugi. 
what are the Kintsugi moments in your life? Mm. Golly, I wish, <laughs> I wish you'd put me on the spot. <laughs> make it. Maybe. I think it's your turn to share. Broken, yeah. Uh, yeah, broken open. Broken, broken open. Is that better, better healed than never broken. Better healed than never broken. I think we go through through each stage of our life and and question our decisions. Right. Sure. Question decisions we, we made on both a personal and professional level. And, and I think that happens when, when things get hard mm-hmm. and when things get hard, the easiest thing to do is to what is to list it, put a sign in the yard. I agree. I, and I think we're, again, I hate speaking for, for the broader audience, but I think most of us are hardwired that way. And maybe I think that cause I just am. And I could certainly look at areas in my life where things got hard and I just stuck it out. And there's this beautiful, you know, something on the other side of that. Again, like the house situation. But I really believe when things get tough, we just want to scratch it and move on. Right? Mm-hmm. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. I think that if I look back on my life and and look at the moments that, that are, are the defining moments in my life, it, it is those Kintsugi moments mm-hmm. where you you go through a process that does in fact push you to places that you didn't think were possible mm-hmm. and and you come out of it better. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that something that used to take me six months when I go through that process takes me six weeks, that takes me six days, that takes me six hours, that takes me six minutes. You, you go through that entire process and you learn along the way. Well, well, why? Because you're making renovations in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You're making renovations in yourself and your career from, from where you've started to, to where you are. And think about how you spend your time and how you spent it a year ago. Mm-hmm. It's probably completely different. Well, well, what did you do? You renovated literally from... Well, well I mean, we just had that experience this morning. Okay. So uh, I got a buddy of mine who's talking about wanting a putting green in his backyard. And he calls me the other day and he goes, all right, I think I'm about there. And I said, well, I need to revisit this. You know, it's been about 18 months since I looked over there. And a lot of things are different now. So we went and looked at it and I pulled up the old quote and uh, Brian and I were looking at it and it was, it was awful. I mean, it, it showed, it showed on the proposal that we were going to make like $3,000. And if I did it for that same price right now, I would probably lose a few hundred dollars. Oh wow! But because I didn't, I do some things different now than I used to. I, di- I didn't think about what's my operating cost per day here over the course of a year. How many days are we going to lose due to weather, et cetera? And looking at that quote again, uh, eighteen months ago when I quoted that, I would have been happy to get mm-hmm. the job, but I wouldn't have realized that I didn't win on the job until six months, a oh, year wow. down the road. So now we're re- we're evaluating performance on a day to day basis, not on a year by year basis, and that, everything flows so much better. I mean, from from looking at that to this, and uh, speaking of developing, I mean, we look back through there, and there was one material on the on the sheet that I used to spend twenty dollars and fifty cents per item on, and we spent eight dollars on it now. Oh wow! And there was one we looked on there. It was another one that was twenty one twenty two fifty. And we spend eight dollars on it now, and just looking at that development. Those are all and, renovations. Absolutely, it's what's our bottleneck? What's pushing us over the top? How do we how do we develop ourselves as a company? How do we get better? And you don't you don't realize unless you track it some kind of way with like at the the car manufacturer we had Kaizen sheets, right? You could see data and trends and when you put countermeasures in and what performance was after that countermeasure. You don't really. You get so caught up in the hustle and bustle that you don't check performance. And looking at that to where we are now is so much different because we developed. I was a self-learner. I went and talked with other people and studied other people as well. I got the right people on my team like you. You know, all those things Thank together. Uh, well, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good point. And one of the things that we try, we're trying to do here, thanks to some good audience feedback, Rob Ivey, kudos shout out to you is how do we get practical with this theme or this idea or topic of our episodes? And that's, that's a great example of that, right? Mm -hmm. Like taking inventory constantly, 
you know, I think there's a, there's something to be said. I think we've talked about this. Goats have to be content and complacent, right? But there's some. I think it's important that we take inventory, self inventory, and maybe you take it with with somebody in your life, like your spouse. Take them on a date and say, hey, let's let's talk about areas we can improve in our relationship. Where are some areas we need to blow up mm-hmm. and then rebuild? And to right? your point, you have to do something. You either yeah. have to say, I'm going to do something about it or I'm going to walk from it. You've got to do one or the other. And, and goats can't sit there and just continually go through it and know they're not happy with it. We are you're not having, advocating you're having, to leave your spouse, by the way. For we sure. Are, this is nothing spouse related. We are, av- we are advocating that you find a way to repair it with gold. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking about love right now. I'm thinking yes. about business right yes. now. <laughs> there's, there's both. I think goats the, the best the best connections for me. Are you really about, about lessons? Is he really? You're really thinking about love. He is. The, well, I mean, I said spouse. I mean, He's I talked love, about Vanessa, and it's just really got okay. them. But right. I think. But here's what I was going to say. The best lessons in life for me, the defining lessons, moments in my life, I can apply them to work. Business, marriage, parenting, relationships. I agree. And they all fit, as does this very message. Live, love, work, parent. That's what mm-hmm. we do every day, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Well, Live, love, like work, if you're parent. not getting the right feedback from the, the right behaviors, or you got to figure out something. Something's not yeah. working. Something's got to change. I mean, uh, are you not constantly doing that every day in your business? Why did I not get the sale? Let me evaluate. Why did my employee yeah. think that was okay to do? How, no, how do I, I communicate I more think, effectively? I don't think we tend to do that. I think really? it takes a very intentional process, mindfulness. I think goats do, which is what we're striving to get to, right? But I think sometimes we just get so bogged down. And I mean, I know this week you've shared a couple of times. This week's been nuts for you. You mm-hmm. probably haven't had, you probably haven't been intentional about spending time in some of those areas because you're just. Wearing a lot of hats yep. this week, right? So well, everything about this week, I think I've already talked to you about it. I'm thinking, how can I, how can I delegate better? How can I get a Mercedes Sprinter with a mobile office and a driver? Like, is that the play? Is I'll, an assistant the play? I'll be your driver. Oh no. Yes. No. I'm a good driver. <laughs> You're on that camp too. My whole family says that I'm a bad driver. Oh wow. <laughs> what about the renovations in your head? You know, when I first started. Hmm. Consulting. Mm-hmm. I got my PhD at 28, full professor, about 36, 37. And I walked around campus, and here's what I said to myself Eric, you'll like this. I was smart. I could have done something. How in the world did I end up here? That's what I said to myself. Mm. And, and you know, that idea of 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s at that moment, and it's not that what I was, what I was doing wasn't impactful, it's not what I was doing wasn't something that gave me purpose and contribution and meaning. It's, it's, here's what I said to myself. I got so much more to give. They did a study of 90 year olds on their deathbed and they asked them the same question. They got the same answer. Everybody said I could have done more. I could have been more. I could have loved more. Could have had so much more to give. And I think when you're thinking about the renovations in your head, which is where this whole thing starts, right? Sure. Renovating your head is, is to think about yourself. What is it that you really want to give and how can you do it? Right. Because most of us are reading from a script. We all have a narrative that's either written for us or by us. And we all have this script that's playing in our head every day. And so the renovations start certainly with us. I mean, I called it self-inventory a minute ago, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it starts with that self-inventory. So what's one, thing, so- what's one thing you've listed in the last, in the last year? Ooh, uh, gosh, I don't know. But you know what? I, I, will, I will often ask. I think... It's, it's one thing to take it self-inventory, and I think it's another to ask those closest to you to help you figure that out too, right? And I do that frequently with, with folks I interact with most at work, with, with Vanessa, with you guys sometimes. I mean, tell me what you think about this, right? So, I mean, I think yeah. – th- so to your point, maybe the pride of I can figure this out on my own or let me take self-inventory and just let that be enough – Mm-hmm. But reaching out to others, putting the ego aside, and getting help that way. I told you, we've had this conversation numerous times. The main focus of what I do on a daily basis is I want to have relationships with people who value me and I value them, mm-hmm. the win-win relationship. And recently I've listed a customer of mine that probably gave me somewhere north of $300,000 worth of work last year. But I could never win on those jobs. 
I was always getting wrong information. I was always getting wrong timing. I was never getting appreciated for my schedule, right? I need you here tomorrow. Like, I can't win like this. Yeah. I'm not, I don't have, I'm not prepared for that. I've already told other people I'm going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. So I've, I tried to love that relationship and love that relationship, but they've been in the same, they've been in the same, they've been the same way since the day they started business and they've never, they've never loved it the way I love what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, maybe they don't have the same, the end goal like I do. My end goal is Time not to just to it. make money, right? My, my goal is to impact more people and to help them win and me win too. Yeah. So that relationship had to get listed. And that's one of the first times I've really understood that in, in this business, right? In the first three years, you're trying to take everything you can get. Just keep getting it and getting it. We're finally in a position now where I can say, all right, I've given all the love I can give. I've got to list this and move on. There's too much other... There's too much other love out there to go get. Well, and, and to, to Rob Ivy, again, to make a, a practical point here, where did, where did renovation start for me? Once I made that decision, I said, I got so much more to give. How can I give it? I got around people better than me that could help me renovate. Absolutely. And, and to your guy, what's his name? The guy, the guy that made your house so beautiful, your guy? Jose Castro. It's a, it's a Jose Castro moment mm-hmm. for me, right? You get around people that are better than you. And here's, here's what I figured out. In the first 18 mm-hmm. months of launching my business, here's number one. I had no idea how to write a proposal. I thought if I made longer proposals, I'd make more money. <laughs> and that's not true. I thought if I could get people to say yes over, you know what I'm talking about, oh, yeah. over a six-month, eight-month period. It's not true. Yeah, it's true. I had no that's idea right. who my ideal customer was. It's not true. And, and, you know, I know that I got around people better than me. And they mm-hmm. said, get people to know faster. Write a one-page proposal. Get around people that value what you bring to the table. When you walk in, be able to that's articulate good. what you value. And so if you're looking to renovate versus list, if you're looking to renovate versus list, then it starts with getting around people like Jose that can help you renovate in your head. So articulate value. And I know we got to land the plane here, as you like to put it. Mm. Can you articulate value? Like you, you have not said anything about my shirt. And it says, well, because, okay. Lucky for me, I'm from Tennessee. Well, because here's why. Because for the first time ever, and this comes straight out of uh, a local clothier in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yes. You, 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 goat imprints. You can goat imprints. You may know them. And That's this a beautiful is, thing. This is our first Thank ever. Thank God he hasn't had it wadded up. In you know, our, our folks that listen <laughs> on like iHeart, Apple, Podbean, Spotify. Amazon, Google, Google, Spotify, they can't see what's happening right now. So you'll have to YouTube. Okay. It. So if you're watching this, here's what I'm saying to you. You will get a shirt. Oh. Just like this. And this is canvas, which is, I understand, is high in material. Canvas. I love it. Canvas is okay. the best. They're the You're going to get one mailed to you if you can tell us in the comment box on Facebook or LinkedIn the name of John's contractor. Oh, Ooh. I like it. A little creativity for I'm this gonna, I'm going to have my kids all send that in. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can... And you cannot, by the way, uh, all this little disclaimer, all VC employees are not allowed to uh, <laughs> to, to uh, fill that box out. They get, them, they get them anyways. If you can tell us who John's um, contractor is that helped him love him and Vanessa and his beautiful family love uh, where they still live today, well uh, then you're getting a free T-shirt. Um we're going to try to land a plane here. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, it's, I it's tried a, to tip us a, it's about a, 10 minutes ago on that. It's, here it's, we are. it's a new studio. It's a new plane. So we're just getting used to it. It's still Southwest. Uh, I think we're going to talk about that today. You know, always get that always get that exit seat, right? That's the one with the most leg room. Yeah. you got to get your A status. And you I gotta think get our going. audience is ready for the exit seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> so so for, for John... Uh, your new nickname, yes, is Captain Kintsugi. Thank you for that. Uh, for Tyler, who who is, uh, uh, they call him Tyler at the playground. I'm yes, Colby Jubinville, and this is the Goat Consulting Podcast.